Hello everyone, GM, GM. Welcome to another episode of the Solana Changelog. I got a special guest with me today. I've got Bree, also from the DevRel team here at Foundation. How you doing, Bree? Hey everyone, I'm doing good. How are you, Nick? I'm doing great. You're in Texas right now at Consensus, aren't you? I am. It's very hot here, but meeting a lot of great people, um, <laughs> went to some cool talk, so it's a great time. And gave a workshop. Shout out for Bree's workshop if you were able to catch it in there. But let's, uh, let's go ahead and dive into the change log. Did you see any commits from this week that were interesting? Yeah, so um, let's get started with this first commit. It's an optimization. Um, so it basically is able to reuse calculated fees. The problem was that transaction fees were recalculated a few times. Um, so we're just optimizing that and being able to reuse the calculation. Nice, nice. Always, always appreciate a good optimization. All right, so this next commit enables CPI tracking by default. Um, so this updated a Boolean in the current code base. And yeah, there's the change right there. So it just makes test cases easier to simulate a transaction and then fetch and serialize an associated event. Yeah, cool. Especially for uh, compression related things. I guess there was based off of how this was kind of working before that you couldn't actually do tests with Solana program tests for compression things specifically because of the no-op program. I don't really understand why, but apparently you can now, so that's fun. All right, and then this last commit, um, it's a way to optimize getting program accounts. Um, so instead of sorting by default, um, it updated to be able to just increase the speed for getting program accounts. Yeah, and, and anyone who's been developing on Solana for a while, they know that get program, get program accounts, GPA, is like the slowest part of Solana. And we've got God Mode Galactus here. It has a little benchmark in here uh, checking for stake accounts and serum accounts. And if you look at this speed change, total time is about a little bit more than eight minutes and then 11 minutes for serum accounts. And then with this change, that drops to two minutes and three minutes. So significant speed improvements on GPA, which is just amazing. Yeah, 430% and 240%. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, no, no small feat there. <laughs> uh, and then let's, let's go ahead and dive into the SIMD of the week. We're going to talk about SIMD96 because SIMD96 was actually just fully approved with a passing of yes. So what ended up happening, and Jacob and I talked about this a couple of weeks ago on the changelog, is for SIMD96, there was a vote put up to all the validators. Mm -hmm. They all got mm -hmm. voting tokens. They were able to actually vote and uh, stake-weighted votes, of course, based off of validator staking. And this uh, SIMD has been approved and will now be go through the normal feature gate activation process. So eventually it will get activated on chain and uh, on mainnet. If you don't already know, SIMD96, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's just going to give 100% of validator priority fees, or rather 100% of priority fees to the validators. Currently and before this uh, actual code gets activated, 50% of the fees were getting burned and only 50% went to the validators. But now that this is approved, 100% of priority fees are going to go to validators. So that's pretty cool. Nice. Awesome. And uh, speaking of, there it is. Speaking of fees on Solana, the fees documentation at solana.com slash docs slash core slash fees has just been updated in the last week or so. There's a whole bunch of more information in here and clarification on all things fees and compute on Solana. So if you're unclear of how the fees kind of work, then take a look at this doc and um, yeah, feedback is always welcome. There's an edit page button here. That you can go directly to GitHub if you have any feedback too. Cool, so diving in more with the doc updates, we have another one for experienced Rust engineers to get started with Solana. Um, so this goes over everything from a Rust perspective of what you would need to start building programs on Solana, understanding Solana core concepts and how to associate that with your Rust knowledge. So definitely recommend if there's anyone interested in starting to get, um, starting to build on Solana, then take a look at this doc. Yeah. And then we'll go into re more resources for the week from the community. My favorite one was actually, and I, I've started doing this, I've started putting a call out on Twitter if anyone can submit a resource and I'll take a look at it and maybe add it in. And Dean from WBA and, and Turbine he created the Fibonacci sequence on Solana, which, you know, people, people are familiar with the Fibonacci sequence. But the thing that's really cool about this is he wrote it in eBPF assembly. So, like, look at this. Look at this code right here. 
it's yeah, just it's just why I, I love it. I love it so much. Um, but the thing that's extra cool that a it's written in assembly ebpf assembly but if you look at the compute that it actually takes to do this is significantly lower than basically any other way you could do it it's like the lowest possible compute um you got a little little uh table here so it's just like incredibly cool and i will say that dean actually pointed out that if we do a more optimizations by just writing everything in assembly we can make more uh optimizations which you know is uh is something <laughs> Did you see any resources from this week? Yeah. So one that I wanted to point out is um, Kenobi. So Metaplex actually updated Kenobi to be able to support now generating anchor types. So you can generate anchor IDL types as well as, I mean, sorry. So you can generate anchor IDL types for native Solana programs. Yeah, this one's really cool. And then we'll go ahead and wrap up the change log for this week with the shout out for Stack Exchange. So shout out to everyone on Stack Exchange that are fighting the good fight over there. We got Jimmy who is leading the week right now. And we've got Chalda with the number three rank and Mitchell Dennis and Joey, good old Joey from Stockpile. And now it's squads. Uh, yeah, and great work from everyone on Stack Exchange this week. And that'll wrap it up for this week's change log. And we'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye. <laughs>